Good evening, my friends. This video is not for most of you. Probably not for any of you. For a long time, I have been wanting to create a video, especially for those who are not raptured off of planet Earth. And I think most of you friends are going to be raptured out of here. But we know from Scripture that most people will be left behind. This video is for them. And this video is not complete. This is not going to have everything that I wanted to share with you. But since nobody except God knows when the rapture will occur, I wanted to get something out for you, just for you, that are left behind in case it happens tonight or tomorrow or very soon. And so that's what this video is going to be about. And like I said, this is not complete but it can save your life and it can save your soul if you get left behind. It's going to be rough. It's going to be very rough. The earth, the world, is going to go through the hardest, most difficult, most evil seven years ever that this earth has had. It's a time that you really don't want to be on earth. You want to be gone. But most, the Bible says, will be left behind. So let me just t tell you some of the things that the Bible says about it and what you can do about it if you watch this video before the rapture occurs. <clears throat> and don't listen to the people saying that the rapture doesn't happen until the middle of the tribulation or the end of the tribulation because they are wrong. They are workers of Satan trying to get you to stay here and be here when Satan is ruling. And you don't want to be here. But in case you are, you can still be saved. It's just probably going to cost you your life. You're probably going to get beheaded for it. But being beheaded is very temporary when you're talking about all eternity. And you want to be in heaven for all eternity instead of hell. So you're going to have a very, very tough decision to make. Do I let them chop my head off now so I can be a Christian for all eternity and live in heaven for all eternity? Or do I live my own life now and spend all eternity in hell? That's going to be the only two choices, friends. Whether you believe in heaven or whether you believe in hell does not matter. They both are real. There's plenty of evidence for both. And everybody that was ever born is going to spend all eternity in one of those two places. Jesus, who is the Son of God, who cannot lie because he is the Son of God, preached more about hell and about heaven while on earth than any other person. So it is real. They're both real. And everybody will spend an eternity in one of the two places. And the Bible says most will deny Christ and live in hell. 
and they will regret that decision one second after they got there. But it'll be too late to do anything about it then. Hell is not a fun place to party. It will be torment and torture constantly without end. Let me give you what I got here. And this, you know, if the Lord tarries, I'll come back in another week or two or three with some more stuff, some more guidance. But this will save your soul in case the rapture happens tonight or tomorrow. And that's what you need more than you need anything else, is to have your soul saved by God so that you can spend all eternity in heaven. That beats the heck out of the alternative, friend. All right. And I'm I'm not a preacher. I've never been a preacher. <clears throat> I've got degrees, but I don't have any degrees in preaching. So, so this is just a, a message coming from the heart of an old ball-headed man who is concerned for your eternity and your soul. I'm nobody special. I'm just a man who loves the Lord and who doesn't want you spending eternity in hell. All right. Acts chapter 16, verse 31. And this, my friend, is how simple it is to become a Christian. Acts 16, 31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Bam! Right there is all you need to know. Believe on Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. Believing on Jesus takes a little bit of faith, and God gives you that faith through His grace. So there ain't nothing you got to do. There's nothing you can do to save yourself. Everything that had to be done was done by Jesus Christ on the cross. He died for your sins. That totally washes away all your sins. Uh, he died for your sins. And that totally washes away all the sins so that God sees you as a holy person. That saves you from eternity in hell. Let me give you some more verses here. If you say, oh, but I'm a good person. I never did anything bad. Well, guess what? I'm a good person too. I never committed any crimes. <clears throat> I always help people. I was always a nice man. But you know what? My life stunk because of all the sin in my life. And even my sin didn't get me in jail not one time. My sin never had any consequences here on earth but had I died in my sin I would have spent all eternity in hell and friend I came very close to that happening I was in a very bad car accident I was not even moving I was stopped first in line at a red light and I got hit head on by somebody that ran through the red light and that accident just about killed me. It crippled me, uh, paralyzed me from the waist down. I was told I'd never walk again. But I did. I was told I'd never, I'd not survive. They said I was gonna die. And I was not a Christian at that time. If I had died, friends, I would have been in hell for 21 years already. So I thank God that he saved my life and then four months later, he saved my soul. And 
I was an old man when he saved my soul. I didn't get saved when I was a young kid like most kids do. I was an old man. I knew better. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. And this is where I was going before I started chasing that rabbit. You say, oh, but I'm a good person. I never did anything wrong. I didn't either. But let me read you this. Romans 6, verse 23. says, the wages of sin is death. So if you ever sinned, you're condemned to death. And it's talking about eternal death in hell. There's another verse I wanted to read to you also. Let me see if I can find it real quick. I think it's in Romans 3. Let me jump over there to Romans chapter 3. <clears throat> There it is. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It doesn't say some have sinned. It doesn't say many have sinned. It doesn't say most have sinned. It says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All means you too. You may have lived a very good life as a very good person, but you're a sinner. And sin will keep even the best person in the world out of heaven unless you repent of the sin, admit that you're a sinner, repent of that sin, and turn to God. All right, and then that other verse I read you was Romans 6, 23. It says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, and through Jesus Christ our Lord is the only way you can get to heaven. Jesus is the one that paid for your sins. You couldn't do it. Nobody in the world could do it. All the people in the world put together couldn't do it. But Jesus could and he did. All right, let me see what else I got for you. Romans chapter 10. Verse 9, it says, If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and if you believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So after you confess your sin, after you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that he is Messiah, then you've got to confess to others, to your friends, to your co-workers, to whoever, your family. You've got to confess that Jesus is Lord. You've got to believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And it says, then you will be saved. All right, what else we got here? Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You want salvation? You want to be saved from an eternity in hell? Call out to Jesus. Believe on Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, 
the truth, and the life. And no man cometh to the Father but through me. Jesus is the only way to heaven. Bam. That's it. All right. What else we got here? All right. That's, well, let me see what this is in Second Corinthians. Chapter 7, verses 9 and 10. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verses 9 and 10. It says, Now I rejoice not that you were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation not to be repented of but the sorrow of the world worketh death and it's talking about eternal death and now I am going to tell you to read the book of Revelation starting at chapter 3 everything from 1, 2, and 3, from 1 through 3, is talking about the church. And chapter 3 of Revelation, the church gets raptured out of planet Earth, and it's just going to be the lost people that never accepted Christ left here after that. So, you want to know what's fixing to happen? Read Revelation 4 through the end of the Bible, the end of the book of Revelation, which is, I think, 21 chapters. Twenty-two chapters. So chapter 4 through 22 is going to tell you in pretty much detail what's going to happen at the end, after the church is raptured out of here. And it's going to get bad. For the first year or two after the church is raptured out of here it's going to look pretty nice the antichrist will come on scene he's he's alive on earth now we just don't know who he is <clears throat> i've got some ideas but don't know until after the church is raptured out of here who who it will be but i've got some pretty good ideas who it's going to be but I'll be gone then, so I won't know until I come back later. Uh, but read verse uh, chapters 4 through 22. That'll give you in very detail everything that's going to happen. One of the thing that's, things that's going to happen during the tribulation period is what they refer to as the mark of the beast. And you've probably heard about that. And it's pretty detailed about what it is and how it's going to work and how it's going to be introduced just read the latter parts of Revelation and it'll tell you the mark of the beast is created it is made it has been manufactured it is ready to be implemented right now when it starts, we don't know because we don't know when the rapture is going to be. We don't know when the Antichrist will come into power. But it's going to be very soon because it, all of that is made. It's ready to go. They could start implanting the mark of the beast tomorrow if they wanted to. You don't want to take it. If you take the mark of the beast, and you'll know when you take it, if you take it. It's not something that's going to be secret. It's going to be them telling everybody they got to do it. And what, what you're doing, what they're not telling you, but what you're doing is 
pledging your allegiance to the Antichrist. And if you pledge your allegiance to the Antichrist, friend, you're doomed to hell. Bang. Bam. Just like that. There's no undoing it. Once it's done, it's done. So do not take the mark of the beast. And the mark of the beast will be something, some kind of microchip or something implanted under the skin of your hand or your forehead. And you will know when they do it or before they do it. And if you take it, if you let them give that to you, you are pledging your allegiance to the devil. And if you do that, there's no way you can be saved after that. So don't do it. Eventually, before the tribulation period is over, anybody that did not take that mark will be executed. So that's why I keep telling you, now is the time for you to become a Christian, to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You don't want to do that. You don't want to go through that. You don't want to even be here during the tribulation period. But if you are here, just don't take the mark. It would be better to have your head chopped off and spend all eternity in heaven than to spend all eternity in hell because you took the mark. And that's the two options you're going to have. Either take it or don't. And I'm telling you, don't take it. And I think that's all I've got. Uh, I wrote Revelation chapter 13 down there for something. Let me hop over there and see what it's referring to because I can't remember. Revelation chapter 13 is talking about all the beasts and the monsters and things that's going to be here. You don't want to go through that, friends. You do not want to go through that. It, it's going to be like hell on earth, literally, for seven years, especially the last five or six years. The first year, first couple of years, first year, first year and a half, is going to be like a transition period, transitioning over from what we've got now to the time when Satan himself is going to be ruling planet Earth. And they want it to be a smooth transition so people don't get scared. They, they want as many souls as they can get. Satan wants as many souls as he can get. And so he's going to make the transition very appealing, very nice at first. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. Or read the book of Revelation. The Bible does not lie. It was written by God. God cannot lie. Everything, matter of fact, if you have doubt, go study prophecy. You will see that almost every prophecy written in the Bible thousands of years ago has happened exactly to a T the way it was written two or three or four or five thousand years ago. And you can better believe that the last little bit that hadn't been fulfilled yet will also be fulfilled exactly as it was written many, many years ago. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved today, my friend. That's all there is to it. 
admit that you're a sinner and you are a sinner, even if there are little tiny minor sins, you are a sinner. Admit that you're a sinner. Repent of your sins. Be sorry that you did all those sins. Ask the Lord into your life. Ask Him to be your Lord. Ask Him to be the Lord of your life. Confess with your mouth to your friends, to your co-workers, to people you see on the street that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let them know. Warn them of the dangers they're about to go through. Share the good news of Jesus Christ. And you will be saved. And you need to be saved more than you need anything else. That's it, friends. I'll come back with more at some point. I don't know when. I think what I've given you is enough, but I might come back with more elaboration on some of it especially the parts in Revelation. It, if you're not used to reading Revelation, it can be kind of confusing. You know, a lot of people don't understand it. If you let the Holy Spirit be your tutor and your guide, then it becomes crystal clear. And that's what I do. Anytime I pick up this book right here, I ask the Holy Spirit, to be my tutor and my guide. And I know the Bible pretty good, but there's parts of it that is confusing even to me. So every time I pick it up, I ask the Holy Spirit to be my tutor and my guide, my translator, to make it crystal clear to me what God's message is, and He does it. And He'll do the same for you. I love you, friend. I really have a concern for you and your soul. I get nothing out of this. If you're lost right now and you become saved because of what I have just taught you, I'll probably never know. And it doesn't matter. I don't need to know. So there's nothing in this for me. But I have a deep concern and a genuine love for people who are lost. And I don't want anyone to go to hell. I don't care who you are. I don't want anyone to go to hell. So that's why I'm on here doing what I do. Hoping and praying that a few souls will be saved as a result of my videos and me pouring my heart out. Love you. God bless you and good night, friends.